Hello and welcome to another Scottish Mountain Walking Guide. In today's episode I have returned to Gulvane, which I attempted and failed a little over a year ago. Upon my return I was met by even more snow, but a lot less wind. Parking is at the side of the A830 at the western end of Loch Eel. Parking is free, there are no height restrictions and you can probably fit around 5 or 6 cars. It's around 3 hours drive from Glasgow and 4 hours from Edinburgh. As always, links to the OS map for the route, the starting point car park and the Scottish Mountain Weather site are included in the description. The total distance for today's walk is 21.5 kilometres with 1300 metres of ascent. It is expected to take around 8 hours without snow. The route is fairly easy to navigate, there is no scrambling or tricky sections to traverse. There is a narrow section at the end of the ridge with some steep drops on either side. So starting from the parking layby, you head northeast towards the A830, cross over the road and take the small road on the north side. Turn down the road to the right hand side, cross over the bridge and then at this junction take the left. You'll go around a gate on this gravel road and you're going to follow this gravel road for about 6 kilometres. The road itself starts to ascend up this, the hillside here, so you gain a little bit of height and then descends all the way back down until you cross over the river on this bridge onto the opposite side. Continue to follow that gravel road all the way along the riverside. Around about this point here, the gravel road ends. It's a narrower path, still easy enough to follow. There's a split in the path around about here where another path goes up this valley. It's not shown on the map. You want to continue straight ahead at that point. There's another junction in the path around about here. Now you can see that earlier one I mentioned. There is another path that kind of goes off to the right here. But you want to go straight ahead, following the path as it goes up the mountainside. And now it's going to start getting steeper. You can see the gradient lines. It will then start to zigzag as it gets to the more steeper sections and you continue to follow that path up. With the snow some sections were quite difficult to follow. You're essentially keeping quite close to the edge. It's steeper just round the corner here. You're going up this ridge line. When you come up to the first summit it's about 850 meters. It then drop off a little bit. There are two little lock-ins just here. Something to be careful of in the snow that they were completely covered over. So I kept well to the left hand side here and just head straight up. You're going up this ridge line. On the day of the walk because of the wind the snow was shallower on the left hand side so it was easier to walk on the left. So I actually went straight up here more direct to the first trig point. From the trig point you want to turn slightly to your right keeping on the left hand side as you're going along here. From a distance the final ascent up to the summit of Gulvane looks extremely steep. When you get closer it's not as bad as it looks. So you make your way along the ridge Again, I was keeping to the left in the shallower snow. You'll start to make your way up the other side. There's no real difficulties coming up here. It gets a little bit narrow right about here. There's some drops on either side, but it's not a cliff. It's not straight down. It's just a steep slope, so it doesn't feel too exposed. And you just keep making your way up, and you'll quite quickly come to the summit cairn, a large cairn on the summit of Galvane. On the day I was there, the views were amazing across to the northwest. It was a lot cloudier to the south. From the summit, you're simply going to retrace your steps back down. You've got about 100 metres to ascend to get back up to the trig point. And in the thick snow, this was quite a slog. After you get to the trig point, you're just descending all the way down. Again, having walking poles makes it a lot easier and less likely to slip in the snow. You'll continue to make your way down, descend back down until you join up to the, the sort of muddy path to begin with and then you'll be back onto the gravel road. Once you're back down to this gravel road, you can easily walk it out in the dark. I walked all the way out without even using a head torch and I'll show the video but I'm going to also show the route in daylight because I do have time lapse from the failed attempt so I'll show both. But you make your way back out just following the gravel road all the way down. I think you could easily cycle to about this point here. Gravel road it deteriorates quite a lot near the end but you could easily cycle about five or six kilometres of it. But you make your way all the way back out back down to where the car park is. Good morning. It's just after 8am. You can see the snow has been falling. I've returned to Gulvane. Today the weather is forecast to be not so windy, but quite cold. Quite an easy route to navigate from the parking layby here, back out to the main road, cross over, and then head down to the right. And then you follow the gravel road all the way to the start of the mountain. Nice snowy mountains everywhere. So just crossing over the road here, down the road on the opposite side, and then you bend down to the right and cross over the bridge over there. Mm -hmm. 
just after crossing this bridge you turn down the road to your left and from there it's a straight road all the way to the start of the mountain There is a short section of uphill. We're going to start descending back down and actually go down and cross over the river. Nice calm morning so far. Winds are expected to be up to about 15 miles per hour. I think temperature with wind chill is about minus 10. You can see the ridge of Gull Vane heading up towards the first trig point. That was where I turned back last time. Poking out above the clouds. Should be a lovely day for the walk. It's a nice gentle start to the day this walk. If there wasn't the snow and ice, you could quite easily cycle this. It's taken me one hour to get to this point. Some of the road is a bit rougher than other sections. Pretty much at the end of the gravel road, still an easy path to follow to the foot of the mountain over there. We're just going to go up where the sunshine is, keeping a little bit to the right hand side of that edge and then along the ridge. Just ahead the path splits, you can just make out a track going up there to the left. You can see it more clearly further ahead. We're not going that way. The path also goes to the right. On the map it shows it going slightly more directly ahead, so we'll see if we get along there a little bit. But you can see just there on the hillside, the start of the path. And it just goes up there. After that, yeah, it's probably covered in snow. Just need to make my way up slightly to the right hand side of the ridge, all the way up to the first top. I'm now at the start of the path that leads directly up the mountain. I've covered about six or seven kilometres so far, and the summit is about 11 kilometres, just a little bit less than 11 kilometres from the start. So there's only four or five kilometers left. The harder part is there's over 1100 meters to climb up. The 
slight breeze picking up. Nothing too major at the moment. And the other good thing, with it being winter, I only really need to get back down to here before it gets dark. The path from here back to the van is clear and easy to follow, even in low light. This path zigzags up here. So far it's been easy enough to follow, even in the snow. Looks like there's a bit of a weather front coming in. The weather report did show cloud coming over from time to time. A little bit of snow flurries. But most of the day it was meant to be clear. the snow come on. With a bit of luck this will just blow over. Still going to take a wee bit to get to the top. Currently just below 400 metres in altitude. The summit's at 990 metres. And this first top I'm coming to is 870 metres. So not even halfway up this ridge. I still have 250 metres to the first top on this ridge, three hours into the walk. This is hard work coming up here, very steep, sometimes the snow is a bit deeper. Starting to clear up. This is one of the toughest walks I've done this year. I'm at the first high point on this ridge, 850 metres, bends slightly to the left and descends a little bit 
there are two lock-ins over there. You need to be careful you don't fall through the ice. I'll probably keep to the left. Uh, about 120, 130 metres to the trig point and ascent. And then you've got to walk along the ridge for about a kilometre, dropping about 100 metres and then climbing another 120 metres. Keeping a little bit to the left of where the path is marked on the map. With the wind, it's blowing the snow off the edge and the, the snow is a bit shallower here. Over to the right, it's quite deep and very slow going. Made it to the trick point. Now you bend to the right and go along this ridge. Without the snow, it's an easy walk. With the snow, yeah, the deep snow is tough to wade through. Four hours and ten minutes to this point. Should get up to the summit before one o'clock and about three hours to get back out. Yeah, not much to see just now. And to start with, you go down the left hand side, keep to the left of the ridge. about a foot deep all the way along there. I hope this is easier than it looks. It'd be nice if it clears up. I do have crampons and ice axes if required. So I'm not the only person up here. It's clearing up nicely behind me. And I can just make the summit make out the summit. The wind is picking up a little bit, getting a bit colder. Almost at the summit. I'm keeping to the left hand side here. You can just see where the blades of grass are poking through the snow. So it's a little bit shallower. Almost there. Last bit of the ridge is quite narrow, 
snow is fresh, very soft, so it's easy to walk through. Still a little bit deep. There's a the top just there. At the summit of Gulvane. Oh, that was tough. It has taken just over five hours to get here. 1 p.m. Well, just after 1 p.m. I'm not going to hang around. I need to get back down. It'll get dark in three hours time. It should only take about three hours to get all the way back to the van. But there's still the ascent back up to the trig point. After that, it's all downhill. Quite easy going. So from here, retrace your steps, heading southwest towards the trig point. I'm back at the trig point. This time, going to some nice views. That was tough coming back up to this point again. From here on down, it's almost entirely downhill. And the snow's nice and soft, so it should be quite an easy descent. You can see the path I made all the way along the ridge line. Oh, it's freezing in the wind. Right, from here, you bend slightly to your left. Just follow the footprints all the way back down.
just at the top of the final descent, another 750 metres back down to the track. It's taken about an hour to get back to this point. The descent is far quicker and easier. checking the map and the estimated time it's around half an hour to get to the bottom of this slope back onto the track but it's about two and a half hours back to the van and that means it's going to be one hour of walking in the dark well sunsets at four o'clock it won't be completely dark we might get back to the van before it gets totally black It's nice being out of the wind again. There's a good amount of zigzag in this path which makes this steep section not too bad. Still got a bit to drop down, doesn't look too far. made it back down off the mountain on this rough dirt path to start with which joins up with the gravel road and then gets quite good 20 minutes until sunset probably about two hours to walk to get out oh, I need to use my head torch Time is five to four, officially sunset. And we'll see how much darker it gets in the next 10 minutes.
back at the bridge that crosses the river. So the last uphill section is coming up. It's half past four, it's getting properly dark. You can still make out the gravel road. I think it's about three kilometers back to the van. Oh, it's a long, hard walk, this one. So I'm back at the junction where we first turned off, just after crossing that bridge. So turn to the right, follow the road up to the main road, cross over, and you'll be back at the car park. It's exactly nine hours since I left the car park area. It is properly pitch black now. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to showing you more in the next one. Bye for now.